All right, everybody. Welcome back. We are live here again on Stogie 411 with Mike and Mike. How's it going, buddy? Hey, it's going good. What about yourself? I uh, can't complain, can't complain. Finally getting back on the airwaves again. Glad everybody, welcome everybody in the chat room. Glad you could join us again for another episode. This would be what? Episode 5, I believe. Episode 5. Wow. We haven't been kicked off the air yet. Yet. Well, as you can see by the screen, we have a couple gentlemen here, and today our guests are Skip and Mike from Crow Magnum Cigars. How you doing, guys? Good. Well, thank you. How about yourself? Doing good. Doing good. I'm a little bit scared. No, oh, don't stage yeah, fright. Don't be scared. We got Tom under control in the chat room. You don't have to be scared. It's all good. They got him censored. Apparently, <laughs> Tom's always censored in our chat room. Well, basically, guys, uh, why don't you give everybody a little bit of information, a little bit about yourself and uh, about your uh, your new adventure that you two have uh, went into, just so who, some people may not know about it, and uh, give them some info. Tell us a little bit about yourselves. My name is Michael Rosales. I'm the creator and owner of Adrian Cigars. This is my man right here. This is uh, Skip Martin. You're taking about himself. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm Skip Martin. He is. Chief also known as Chief Havin. Yeah. Yeah, so we, uh, Mike and I own two separate companies. Mike owns Costa Rican Imports, which uh, owns uh, Adrian's uh, Cigars of uh, Costa Rica. And I own Galveston Bay Tobacco, which operates uh, Havin Cigar Shop and Lounge, and also owns the uh, Cro Magnum uh, brand. Sweet. How did you guys. Uh I want to tell the people how you guys how did you come together with this collaboration? How did it happen? I was sitting in a bar one night at two thirty in the morning and across the room this sexy bitch. <laughs> no, I scoped him from across the room. <laughs> playing the smoke. He was playing uh I saw you standing in the rain. That's right. I said, Damn, look at that, that big old man titties. Let me take him. Is that orange juice Jones? That's it right there. Yeah. 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 No, it was, it was yeah. magical. <laughs> Love at first sight. <laughs> um, we actually, when well, I first came across Skip in a couple of different uh, cigar lounges around town, and there was this guy that uh, basically was a, was a huge cigar fanatic and passionate about the cigar, but I never really quite knew who he was or what his role was, but he seemed to know an awful lot about people in the industry, and uh, so whenever finally we got a chance to actually get a chance to sit down and talk, he explained to me a little bit about his store and where it was at and location and stuff. And um, come to find out, we actually had a lot of the same uh, relationships with other people in the industry. And so it just, you know, just kind of evolved into that. That's all right. Yeah. I mean, the, I mean, the easiest way to say that is that we're both, we both live in Austin. And kind of, you know, in any city, the, the guys who smoke cigars are familiar with each other. Uh, we only have two or three real legitimate uh, B&Ms here. And so uh, Mike and I would run into each other every now and then. I knew he owned a brand. Uh, he knew I owned a store, but uh, we never really kind of hooked up and, and did anything. Uh, and then after the, the hurricane uh, destroyed my store in, in Galveston, I was up here a lot more. And uh, Mike and I started hanging out and, and started talking about uh, you know, kind of what the next phase for both of our business is going to be. And so I guess about a year later, uh, we, we uh, had come up with the Crow magnum blend and then just started working on the branding and uh, decided that we were going to reopen uh, the Have a Cigar online and that uh, we were going to use my, uh, my business to distribute uh, all of our cigars and that we were going to use Mike's expertise in Latin America to start making cigars for ourselves and uh, importing cigars from other people to distribute. So we're about, I guess we're about 30% into our plan. Uh, but uh, everything's going good so far. It was really kind of interesting was, you know, Skip is very in tune to two markets and the, basically where we are kind of at as a community is as cigar culture altogether. And I always thought it was very, his opinion and his thought process on where we're at to, as today as as a culture, as a community, and the fight that we're taking on 
as it comes to cigar bans and anti-smoking and some other things that we actually shared a lot of the same views and in, in, in what we thought that, you know, if we don't come together, that we basically have a bigger target on us as a, as a whole. Uh, and so it was kind of a, you know, an interesting, we always had great conversations in, in really in-depth thought process, you know. We have a burning passion for My Little Pony. That's right. <laughs> and, star- and strawberry shortcake. But, hey, yeah, who it's knew? Too no, I think what Mike's saying is true, is um, that the, the model that people use to, 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 to kind of sell cigars is you know, 200 years old or 150 years old. And um, the fact is, is that the environment has changed significantly. And uh, even though the environment has changed significantly, the, the manufacturers and retailers, and, and they haven't really changed their business model. So what we decided to do was to say, hey, you know, first of all, from a consumer-centric perspective, um, everything we do, um, and this Mike doesn't like this aspect of it, but you know, we start doing value stream mapping and saying, where's the value for the consumer, and and where where's the the waste, where's the muda in the system, where's the non-value added things that uh, that either cost money or cause the price to be higher, and you know. There's some negative perceptions about doing stuff online. There's negative perceptions about uh, manufacturers selling their own cigars. But we, we kind of just said, said there's no rules. Uh, what, what, are, what are the uh, – what? Are, let's look at this from a customer perspective and figure out how we can get the best product possible at the, the best value to the customer. And, and in the meantime, streamline our uh, supply chain – so that at the same time we're lowering costs to the consumer, we're increasing quality to the consumer, we're raising profits on our side. And, and that, that concept is called value innovation, and that's pretty much what we're trying to accomplish. Sweet. Good. Well, definitely, it definitely it shows, in your, it shows in your product. I mean, I'm smoking the cranium right now. I've had, uh, I bought the sampler when you first sent them out. I've had pretty much every single one of them, and... Uh, I'll give you this. It's definitely consistent, and the flavors are definitely consistent. It's a it's a really nice product. I, I told you, Skip, when I first got it, it was one of the nicest wrappers I've seen on a cigar in a long time. Thanks, man. And you know, it's not cheap. Yeah. You know, that goes back to that goes back to what it, what are the customers value, right? What the customers value is a lot of flavor, uh, and um, I, I to me, this is my personal opinion as a cigar smoker. I don't really care if, the, if there's a if there's a few color, you know, blemishes. I don't really care if uh, if the uh, uh, if there's a couple of uh, you know beauty issues with a cigar. I, I mainly want it to taste good, and I want the wrapper to be good quality, right? So, um, you know, <laughs> last night actually someone said uh, that they showed our cigar, Carlton you said he showed our cigar to a retailer and the retailer said that it looked painted and, and you know somehow treated and and I can tell you because Mike and I looked at the tobacco uh, ourselves when we bought it this is the $38 a pound uh, Connecticut Broadleaf Maduro it's no it's no joke and it's 100% legit so it, it yeah and that's not that's not Florida prices that's that's, yeah. that's, that's down in yeah. yeah and that's expensive for buying it in country and so you know, that's we put the money where where the uh, consumer wants it, basically. Do you have any uh, do. do you have any plans to expand the line with uh, well something for like a wuss like myself, like a milder side smoke, or are you just focused on what you have right now? Well, this cigar here was made specifically for me, and and the the, the profile of cigars that I smoke. Um, Mike's line is more geared towards more nuanced flavored cigars and you know the maduro in mike's line is a lot milder i don't know if you've smoked uh, any of the adrians but uh we so so we do currently already make something that's uh, all the way from mild to uh to strong we, we got the yeah. connecticut yeah so so and that kind of goes into what, what i think what your listeners are kind of want to like how we got into the line uh, and it goes back to he and i kind of running around the same circle was the question was, why, how come, or what do I got to do to get you to smoke my cigars? If you found a cigar in my line, 
that already exists that, that intrigues you. And you say, oh, the Maduro, by far, is, is great. It's a great product. The other ones are kind of not, not necessarily my cup of tea. And so whenever I, you know, I, well, what's your cup of tea? Let me see if I can find something that kind of kind of gears towards your liking and the flavor profile that you like. So he had some, some cigars that he had specifically done for his shop down in, in, in Galveston. And he brought me a couple of those, and so that was kind of the baseline of what I was trying to go for, um, you, you know, during the, the blending process. So, and then we, we, I think we kind of took it to the next level after that. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, and that's what I told him. I said I can think I can I can do that and then some. So, um, but in the existing core line, the if you like Habano or if you like Connecticut, they're definitely going to be mold to mild to medium, full flavor cigars. Um, the Maduro is going to be full flavor, medium body smoke. So. Uh, we have a, a really good gamut as far as uh, from beginning to end. If, if, you know, if you're looking for something kind of that, that that's already done, the Crow yeah. Magnum is yeah. very specific. It's a very specific smoker that we're looking for. We don't plan on deviating. Yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> and so, me. Yeah, I mean, to, to answer to answer your question, uh, maybe while well, we do have the Connecticut and Havana lines in uh, Costa Rica right now. Um, we're trying because we own our factory in, in Nicaragua. We're trying to get our production up to about forty thousand cigars a month, and with Cro Magnum, we're only doing about four thousand forty two hundred a month. So um, we're making that cigar plus another cigar, so we're up to about eight thousand. So we're going to be adding a lot of things to get that production up. One of the things that uh, we're talking about doing is we're launching a new cigar for Adrian's called Thirty, which we've already started rolling and. Uh, and, and are going to be rolling out probably this fall, um, depending on when they're ready. Uh, that one's going to go straight to the brick and mortar uh, channel, just like Mike's cigars. Uh, they're going to be priced in about the same range as the Crow Magnum, so we'll, they'll have you know new packaging and everything else. Um, the Crow Magnum is really just to have a cigar uh, line. Um, we're, we're at about twelve thousand of a fifty thousand cigar run. Um, Starting in August, the cigars are going to have bands in boxes, and there's information on our blog about that. Um, but the Connecticut and the Havana, uh, we're, we're talking about launching a new, discontinuing doing those in uh, Costa Rica, or at least pairing it back to only service the, the, the accounts that really do well with those. And then launching a, a new brand out of uh, Nicaragua called Intemperance, uh, which is kind of a the, the temperance movement, intemperance is uh, basically being drunk and <laughs> disorderly, I guess. Um, but intemperance is going to have a Connecticut, which we've already blended, which is amazing. It's more of a medium cigar, but it's it's. Uh, I think it's something, Mike, uh, that that you that'll be in line with with what you what you smoke. It's not like any of these other Connecticut's out there, um, because we didn't want to do something everyone else is doing. I think. Uh, 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 Ernesto has probably kind of hit the mark dead on in terms of that mild to medium Connecticut. Yeah, this is going to be a stronger filler. Con yeah, I mean, this is going to be a stronger filler Connecticut. Uh, it's going to look a lot like the Cro Magnon, probably come in the same size as the Cro Magnon, maybe not the uh, Corona. But uh, um, that's going to be good. And then the Habano, I think we're going to re maybe replace with, uh, with a Corojo from Honduras. So. Uh, we're really looking at uh, sourcing the tobacco for that. That one may be a little bit further behind, uh, but uh, I mean, we got a lot of stuff going on. So, yeah, you guys sound like you're really busy. Um, well, you answered one of the questions that John G had. He said, "Are you going to be leaving a band list?" And obviously, the answer to that is no. The Chrome Magnum will eventually have bands on them. Um, um, why don't you? And that was a that was a big debate. I mean, you put a lot of money into the wrapper, and you know the rustic kind of. You know, look at that wrapper. We talked about it a little bit. Um, we've we've probably we've been dealing with every many every, every place that makes cigar bands. We've worked with them, and the problem is is they don't produce uh, proofs. So we we've sent them the artwork. We've we've talked to them about the paper, the process that we want to use, which is a little bit different than the normal. It's a pretty simple band, but it has a very specific look that we're going for. And if, uh, I mean, to be honest with you, John, if we get those labels, uh, if we pay the 3000 bucks or whatever to get the labels, and those labels come in, and they don't look exactly like we want it to look, 
and we think it takes away from the uh, what we're going for with the with the image, you know, kind of the way the cigars look out of the box. Then we won't ship them with the bands. Um, unfortunately, you kind of have to buy forty thousand bands to find that out. Yeah. Wow. So that's where that's what we're doing. Well, I commend you for that. I mean, like you said, yeah. You know, as long as the the cigar tastes good and it's where you want to me I personally I think the band's irrelevant you know it's all about the cigar to me it's not about the band well, I think I think hardcore smokers kind of feel that way because for us it was really I mean, like you said the rapper is the presentation and so whenever you kind of add to that you can go too much and so we initially thought that we would go bandless for the whole thing and then people started getting it and you know and obviously it's a reason they want to identify with, with what they're smoking let's say they got you know a, a, a humidor full of cigars, right? They want to be able to identify what it is, and that makes sense. I get that. Right. However, you pull it out, you know right away what you're smoking, just because it's so distinct and different. Now, and which, which, by the way, may be why we put it on the foot, because what, one of the things, you know, we're we're still gonna once we get them, we're gonna mess with that. But one of the things that I uh, am really concerned with is 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 uh, when you take the band off, when it jacks up your uh, the wrapper leaf. Um, so if that happens on the foot, it's less of an issue. Plus, it doesn't cover up the uh, the, the cigar as much. So I don't know. We're still we're still working on it. You know, it's all part of the process. Is is saying okay, this is the way it's always been done. So let's as a starting argument, let's say let's not do it that way, right? And then in some cases, you say, well, when it comes to bands, there's a reason why that's done, right? I mean. A band or any kind of branding on a product is what adds uh, elasticity of the price elasticity, right? So that's what says this is the product that you're buying. Uh, especially now, you know, me, I, I take a picture of every cigar I smoke. Uh, if you had a band on there, it probably would be, you know, better. Sure. So who knows? I like First the, thing the, I do is take it off, generally. Yeah, the, the foot band's nice, too, because it, it actually helps to protect the foot of the cigar, too, from banging around in a shop or whatever. Well, you guys, now, I can ask this along with that. You're keeping distribution just, or, or uh, you, you're only selling them yourselves, correct? You're not going to give them out to any shops? Cro-Magnon? Or, yeah. Yeah, Cro-Magnon, yes, because we only bought enough wrapper leaf for the first 50,000-ish cigars. So, um kind of a couple reasons. One, because we have a limited run. We didn't want to get it out there in stores and not be able to do anything with it. Two, uh, because w we know what we're doing is we're using the margins from this to fund our distribution center in Cedar Park. So uh, uh, also because we wanted, more importantly, I think of those of the three, is we wanted direct connection and feedback with every person that smokes it. So uh, someone on Twitter says, hey, I'm smoking a Cro-Magnon. I know every single person that's smoked a Cro-Magnon, right? I mean, I, I know their name, their address, their phone number, their email. Um, I've, I've probably, Mike or I have probably talked to them through at least through email. Um, and, and so we get a lot of direct feedback. I don't know if you guys have gone to the site, but uh, there's a feature on the site for product reviews, and there's been tons of really great feedback on there. Um, I would say almost all of it positive. Um, most people, and we've gotten some constructive feedback, right? But a lot of that comes back to us privately. So, uh, and we definitely listen to that because if you don't listen to it, then it's not private anymore, <laughs> right? That's so. right. Now, now, go ahead and give give your uh, cigar the website for your that you're selling them from, and then give the the website that you have for your. Uh, it, I think it's different in it for your blog for the Cro-Magnon. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, our retail site is Have a Cigar Shop, H A B A Cigar S H O P dot com. And on that, on the left hand side, you can select cigars and go into Cro Magnon or Adrian's. And you can also select under the lounge section, um, you can go in and to smoke signals and look at our blog, or you can go into our Twitter feed. So what one of the things that, that kind of what he was talking about is is it allows us to really kind of get a handle on what our customers really value, which was one of the things that we thought that a lot of cigar shops have kind of um, let kind of go away. That customer service, that value, that, you know, there, there have been some shops historically, as soon as someone walks in the door, they know exactly what that smoker is looking for or what they come to buy. They go grab it, they bring it to the counter, 
you know, that's part of customer service because they went out of their way to remember what I enjoy. And I, I think that's a that's a really great example of of, of customer service and, and loyalty to who keeps them in business. And so, you know, we actually enjoy the feedback and talking and, and you know, you really get a pulse on what people are, you know, what's going on in the industry, what people are smoking, kind of like yourself. You said, yes, I'm just mild. You know, okay, next time I go into blending, I'm going to keep you in mind the things that you thought about or talked about with me that will, you know, what is this guy kind of like? What What is, because you're, you're a buyer, right? And so that gives me a really good, um, you know, when I'm when I'm blending and we're talking about blends, um, you know, who, who would this, what's, what's the target market and, and who is that criteria and how does that kind of, would they enjoy it? And um, we enjoy, because we're, pretty active on Twitter and other things, you know, talking to people and kind of getting an idea of, you know, where they're at and what they're doing. And what yeah, I mean, we're, we're currently right now, just so you know, working on a pale-skinned, long-haired, hippie freak yeah. uh, product <laughs> just for Tom and Mike. That's it. Yeah. Just for <laughs> And it'll have a My Little I mean, Pony band, right? It doesn't get more targeted. Yeah, it doesn't get more targeted than that. No. no. <laughs> let's, let, let's, let's go into, uh, I got a question, your packaging. Why, why did you go with the so-called, and I'm going to call it the, the bundle look, was it to keep the cost down to the consumer, or was there another, another reason behind it? Well, right now, there. Right now, well, I assume we're talking about when we when we send the twenty five and the ten. Yes. Right? Yes. So they will always come in five and ten because I mean, what we found is that people really like buying in five and ten quantities. Yep. Um, and we want them branded, and not you know not just uh, uh, you know loose. Um, the, the, right now, the reason why they came in twenty five count bundles is because that's the easiest way to get them through customs. Okay. If you send them through customs in a, in a bundled fashion. They're easier for them to count if they open them, and so you don't have as much hassle. And and the, and the reason why they're not in a box right now is because the boxes just weren't ready. You know, we released the cigars before the cigars were ready before the boxes were ready. So, um, we we we've already got the boxes uh, kind of ordered. They're they're kind of in a backlog. Um, Mike and I are going down to Nicaragua in July. <clears throat> the boxes should be ready. And so the cubes that we sell, the thirty-five count quantities that we sell in August going forward should ship in the uh, in the box and there's pictures of that box on uh, and by the way just so you, know, so you guys appreciate and that, that box weighs about three times as much as a normal box so uh, getting it through customs we pay a shitload of money for wow. <laughs> just to just to get the fucking box through customs is, wow. is another set of bucks right now is there a reason why you made it heavier yeah, because, well, A, because it, you're, we're selling it in 35-count quantities, so we want it to be something that... To keep safe. Yeah, that you keep. And um, I'm a huge believer in Boveda's product, and there's a lot of people who don't buy in quantities because they don't have the humidor space. And so this is one of those deals where um, it's not a humidor per se, uh, but if you were to take a, a humida pack and put it in there, uh, it would it would keep those cigars in good shape, Right. If you were to take half the cigars out, put a humid pack, put the put them back in, put another humid pack on there. I mean, they would be as good as if you put them in a, you know, a travel humidor. So, um, the box is substantial because we think the cigar is substantial, but not Gurkha substantial. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Well, uh, it, it, it's supposed to. It's supposed to. The, the box is supposed to look like. Something you would find in the back of the, you know, the, the warehouse in Indiana Jones uh, that was dug up, you know, and stored. Um, I actually have, have, have gone to the University of Texas here to the uh, anthropology department and, and, and found, like, what kind of labels they put on the, the, uh, the archives that they bring back, like, you know, the bones or whatever. And, and we're putting a, a label in the inside lid of the box that looks like that. So, nice. I mean, for a couple of... You know, cigar smokers. We we gone a little overboard with this whole thing. So. Well, you're kind of look. You're thinking outside the box. That's what it sounds like, and that's that's a good thing. Well, there's a we're we're trying to create. I don't know if you guys are business people, but yep. there's a there's a concept called blue ocean strategy, which basically says um, 
find a new, find a new competitive space to operate in, and they call it blue ocean because the red ocean is is so full filled with competition and the the water's filled with blood, you know. And 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 what we've tried to do is do this value innovation and and you know call it thinking out of the box, whatever. Again, to me, it's the box I've always been in, and I'm just trying to think about. As a, as a guy who spends a significant amount of money that smokes a lot of cigars, what would I want, right? So that's the way I that's the way I uh, operated my store, uh, and this is the way that I uh, that's this is the way Mike and I are doing this. So cool. Yeah, man, yeah. My, my man Rodrigo all over it over here. Yeah, he is. He is. He's a smart dude. I need we need to talk to him. He's giving you the love. Good cigar yeah, too. He's a sharp man. But there are two. I don't think I've ever seen. You never had a Rodrigo. I don't think so. Have you? It, no, no, that's not George Rico. That's Rodrigo. If you haven't had one, you have to have one. Yeah, we need to try. It. There's a lot of you know, kind of on that topic. There's tons of great boutiques out there right now. Yes, there that's, is. That's, that's, that's part. That's you know, we talked about being thirty percent to our goal. You know, another significant part of that channel is, is that later on we're looking expanding out and distributing for other brands. A lot of, there's a lot of, you know, guys in the business. You know, here's the thing. You know, when I got in the business, it was a lot of door knocking and peddling. You know, and, and what I mean by that is I go into a shop, bring in a couple of boxes, hand them out to the guys sitting around, hand them out to the to the owner and whoever was the manager buying guy. And, you know, and because it's one of those things, once you get it in your hand and you smoke it, then you're more likely to, to enjoy it, you know, or go on based on the recommendation of somebody else. Um, but the likelihood of somebody coming into a humidor when they're so many things that they're really already accustomed to, putting something new in their hand is a little bit, that's part of the challenge. And so, um, you know, I've been fortunate to, to grow my business pretty, pretty, you know, in a short amount of time. Um, you know, it's one of those things, but it, it, it's, there are so many guys kind of fighting the same battle that I am if we can use the relationships that I've been able to build over the years or vice versa and and to to distribute for them in some of the channels, then I think later on that I think a lot of guys will appreciate that, that time that I put in, you know, to build those relationships. Yeah, and, we're, and if this is a common question is, are we going to sell anything other than Adrian's and Cro-Magnon or our own brands on the website? And the answer is yes, right? Like, uh, I've already talked, started talking to a couple people about selling, the, selling their product. It, it has to be something that I would smoke it has to be something that's a good value, you know, where the price reflects the quality of the cigar. And it has to be something where the, the person whose cigar we're carrying is in line with our philosophy in terms of customer service and, and in terms of, uh, of, of how they're getting their brand out there. So, you know, if it's uh, some fancy pants guy from California um, that comes out with, you know, a 200 count limited run every fucking three weeks. That's probably not somebody we're interested in in working with. But I'm not not that I'm no I'm not talking about anyone specific. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, okay. <laughs> but if, you know if, if 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 it's somebody who's really kind of put their own money and time and is out on the road and 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 there's quality there and and they actually had something to do with blending it and they smoke it as opposed to kind of having one of the big guys just make it and slap their name on it, then that's definitely something we were interested in. I mean, a couple of guys I think off right off the bat is people like uh, Carmelo uh, DeFazio. Um, I've been talking to them about maybe carrying their product, A, because he's an Italian, and, you know, if we have two, two Italians and one Mexican, then we're two to one. <laughs> and, and, and the other the other thing is because, I mean, he, he, he makes that himself, right? I mean... He works with a small factory, but, I mean, it's not like he's going to, and, and nothing against this, but these guys that go to, you know, Fernandez, Fernandez or Pepin or, or Placencia or Alan Rubin, and, and, they, and they get them to make their cigar, and they really have nothing to do with it. They're just buying a $2 bundled cigar, essentially, slapping their, 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 their uh, brand on it, and then, uh, you know, calling it their cigar. There's a there's a place for that, and a lot of those are decent cigars that I smoke. But it's not something that that I into our model. yeah doesn't doesn't really fit into what we're trying to do. No. Someone like uh, Frank Herrera, someone like Sean Sean Williams. I mean, Sean does have his cigar made at Placencia, 
but he he has been very he was involved in it from the very beginning, and and um, it's a different kind of deal. So, cool. Well, we got a. I'll give you a two part question from the chat room. Uh, Matt asked it, and so didn't. Um, I'll bring it. They said. Uh, are you going to kind of package when you, you're talking about your uh, box of cigars? Is it going to come with a, a Yuma pack, and is it going to be in cello or out of cello? Um, they're going to be in cello, and the, the you know it's real simple because you, you pay so much for the ba- the wrapper leaf that you don't want it to get jacked up by for any reason. I mean, when I pull a cigar, when I buy a box of cigars, which isn't that often. I, it, I like for them to come in cello, and generally I'll put half of them in cello in my humidor and half not in cello. The, the, the half that's not are the cigars that I kind of potentially pull out of there and smoke. The other half are the ones I throw in my travel humidor, I throw, throw in my my, uh, my truck, and, and, you know, the, the cello protects the cigar. So uh, this isn't something where it has to sit on a shelf and be presented to a customer, uh, the chromagnet at least. It's something that has to move from place to place. And it needs to be protected while it does that. Um, the other question was in are, regard to are they gonna are you gonna kind of kind of like the CAO and are you gonna your boxes is it already gonna have a Yuma pack in it or no? You're just gonna be the 35 count in the box because you said it's kind of um, almost like probably, a Yuma. yeah. Well, I would, what we what we so the answer is no, and the reason why is because Tim Swell is a really good friend of mine from um, Boveda. Um, but the problem is, is you have to, to make that price work, you have to make like a million of them, right? I mean, it's, you have to make a shit ton of them. It's not something that you can do on a small run cigar. But, but what we might do is, uh, is, is, uh, ship a Boveda with a cube. And, and what we will definitely do is offer Boveda on our site. So actually that starts in a week or two. The, in the sample pack, it does come. Yeah, that most of the sampler packs, not the pre celloed packed ones, but anything that comes in a Ziploc, we ship with uh, with a Boveda. I mean, when you ordered yours, Mike, it probably came with a Yes, it did. Yep, it did. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. I have a, a thought to, for you to talk about. You have a special humidor, I believe, on your site that I saw. Can you tell yeah, people a little about that? Let me, man, great question. So one of the cool things about our site that we were able to do um, was launch a rewards program. And essentially what it is is a 4% rebate. And we call it the Cigar Weasel Rewards Program. And so <clears throat> if you uh, buy $100 worth of cigars, you get 100 points. And if you go into the Cigar Weasel section and redeem those 100 points, you'll get a gift certificate for $4. Um, so one of the things that, that we did when we launched the brand was we had Eddie DeJong of Vanderburg make us uh, a, a custom humidor that, that I designed with him and uh, kind of along this crepe concept. And we really got to start, we started working on the humidor because Eddie was helping us with the box design. And our initial box design was so elaborate that he said, this is not a box, this is a humidor, <laughs> right? So we kind of expanded on that idea, made the Cro-Magnet Cube uh, into a humidor, which is not cheap, by the way. I think, I mean, they're, they, they really cost about $1,500 a piece. So the, the price on the website is our cost. <laughs> wow. So um, they're, they're not, I mean, the hinges on it are like 150 bucks a piece or something. Yeah, it's it's right. Eddie's it's way over the top. Inside. The wood, I think, because it uses this uh, black walnut, old growth, center cut. Eddie can tell you all the details, but it's expensive. <laughs> so, um, and they're heavy as hell. I mean, the, the humidor weighs, I think, about probably 15 to 20 pounds. I mean, it's, wow. it's not light. So, um, anyway, we ordered three, one for Mike, one for myself, and one that we were going to use for marketing. And what we're going to do is... Uh, we're going to give it away towards the end of the year around in time for people to get it, whoever wins it for Christmas. And the way we're going to des- decide who wins it is um, we're going to do a drawing. And, and entries into the drawing are determined kind of four ways. One, uh, you, you, you get entries uh, if you registered our site. So basically you just go on there, create an account with your email and a password. 
Um, that way you get our uh, emails. Second, uh, if you order something, you get Cigar Weasel points. And every every Cigar Weasel point you earn, uh, it gets you more entries. So probably like 10 points. We haven't decided the details, but probably like 10 or 10 points equals an entry. So the more you buy, the more you uh, have a chance to win. But the entry makes it where, you know, there's no purchase necessary. So that's that's kind of like a legal thing. And then at the end of the year, what we're going to do is we're going to take all those names, put them in a spreadsheet, and send them to uh, Stephen Savoyan, who has this application that randomizes the entries and picks a winner. And then whoever uh, that little thing picks, we're going to send the humidor to. Lucky bastard. <laughs> Lucky weasel bastard. Yeah, that would be weaselly. Weaselly, you know, <laughs> there's, some, there's some great reasons. We've done a lot of cool competitions, you know. Uh, our cigar weasel of the cigar, week. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, that's Which, uh, there's a couple weasels. There's a lot of weasels out there, so we're not going to run out of weasels. We won't run out of weasels. We all, there's always a weasel in the group, right? You know, I'm, I'm a big weasel. I'm a weasel. I'm, you know, I'll show up like, what you got in your bag over there that I need to smoke? And Did you bring a cigar for me today, by the way? <laughs> so... But uh, see, he's already weaseling. Forget yeah. it. I'm always on the weasel, man. So, but, uh, so it was something that we could have a lot of fun with, and, and, and you know, it's, it's really kind of a cool thing. Because you know, we recognize that, hey, you know, there's a weasel in all of us. By the way, can I, can I mention something here? Has anyone ever sent you as many emails or communications about how to set this whole thing up that Mike? I've gotten probably at least 10 things from Mike. Okay, at 11.30 sharp, we're good. We need you to do X, Y, and it's, it's pretty logistically no, I'm planned still out. On his pitching information. Yeah, that's true. To me, so never I think that was just bullshit. But I told you, his I, planning is top notch. The the pigeon got shot, I believe, in Texas somewhere. So oh, I think I think oh, you guys yeah. mistaken that pigeon for a pheasant and killed him. Um, somewhere in the Midwest, he was taken down. Huh? <laughs> oh man, totally true story. This is no no bullshit. You know, we go skeet shit shooting on Sunday, right? And uh, right next to the skeet uh, trap and skeet club. There's a radio-controlled airplane, uh, like, you know, with those big-ass radio-controlled airplanes, those, like, thousand-dollar radio-controlled airplanes. And last week, one of those guys got a smart-ass and decided he was going to turn his plane around and run across the ski range. And the first the first pass he went through, this guy unloaded and blew that shit out of the sky. It was hilarious. It was a whole fiasco, but that's what he gets. Fuck that dude. Yes. Hey. He went in, what's that, the no-fly zone, right? It was a no-fly zone. He violated. He violated, had to shoot him down. <laughs> you got no warning, though. And you don't need warning in a no-fly. You just shoot it down. Especially down here in Texas. I, I, I want to know, Mike, I, I have a question for you. So, first of all, I, I like your crowned heads poster there. That's, I, mean, I saw John Huber on your show. Um, so, you, you, you got friends in high places. But, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not trying to get all in your business. But Go ahead. You maybe send Mike a little money for production set. Uh, <laughs> you know. Hey, I, I mean, put the curtain like up this week. Sheet, <laughs> I, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. We'll be able to do that. Maybe if uh, Cro Magnum wants to sponsor Stogie Four One, how's that go? Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> We're willing to do that, and we'll have the money to get a good set for Michael. All we need is a nice sponsorship from you fellas. How's that? <laughs> Want to talk about Weasel, Weasel, right? Yeah. Hey, man. You know our our uh, our marketing budget is. Uh, Zero right now. <laughs> so isn't our production you know, budget? That's our production. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, the reason why I think is because we can't like we already sold out of two of the th- five sizes. We're running really low on the third one, and you know, so right now it's like why spend money on marketing if I mean I'm old school, right? You know, why spend money on marketing if you can't make them fast as you can sell them anyway? So right, that's true. That is. Now, which oh, size we'll is... send you some cigars to give to your Weasley listeners. Oh, well, well, opportunity to win some? Yeah, so so I think, uh, so maybe we ought to do something where we give a five-pack to someone who's in the chat room. Sure. What do you uh, want to do? Let's do it right we'll now. send you guys a five-pack for the next week. Sweet. You guys want to do a trivia question or something? Like, yeah. What do, what do we, what do we talk let's about do a trip. Let's do, let's do that. You guys pick a question, someone in the chat. They answer it right, you give them a five-pack. Sounds great. Okay, I, here's a good question, because we've never printed this anywhere, but we've talked about it on different uh, things. Uh, who can name, the first person to name in the chat room, 
the four regions in Nicaragua that our Cro-Magnon filler come from. There you go, guys. Think about it. You got time. The first one who pops it up, correct? You're going to get a nice five-pack from Skip and Mike. The yeah, internet's I think our up. site says there's three, but there's really four. Yeah. So get to Googling. Yeah. They're doing it already. I don't yep. think it's written. Well, let me let me ask you, ask you guys this. I'm I'm a big fan in, 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 of the uh, six by sixty, and I know the Mandible XL was a limited edition. Is there any shot of that coming back? Well, it wasn't a limited edition. It was the original. So originally, we told Esteban, and and our guy in Esteban's a, a freaking genius with tobacco, but he's kind of a, he's not the smartest guy in the world with logistics. <laughs> so, so. I mean, he's been working on opening up a bank account for about four months now, I think. Why you got to put our business out there. <laughs> but, no, Esteban, is a, he's a cool dude. And uh, he, uh, when we told him we originally wanted a, a, a 60 ring gauge, we were kind of going back and forth about what the link would, length would be. Um, like five, four and seven eighths, four and three quarters, four and a half or whatever. And... Uh, he said, "Just he just said, fuck it, and made a six by sixty and shipped it. <laughs> so when we got it, we were like, okay, I guess that'll work uh, in terms of the originals, because the original uh, shipment was really just for us to smoke. And then uh, we found we we just thought that 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 six by sixty didn't have enough flavor in it, that it diluted the blend too much, and so um, we shortened it and we made we put more Lajero in there. Yeah, so." And, and right now, that the mandible, which is the the four and a half by sixty version, is one of my favorites yeah. in the line. So we have a. So, but to, answer, to answer your question, we might we might uh, special request that purchasing one. I think we could fill that. But yeah, we were thinking about doing a ten by sixty seven or it's ten by sixty eight or. No, uh, you you jumped ahead to my next question. <laughs> Actually, I think we got an answer to your question. I'm not sure if it's right. So you guys want to check it out in the chat room. Uh, he's got three of the four right. Yeah. You got three to four right. Ooh. Keep digging, guys. Yeah. Is that dude's name really Abraxas? I believe. Uh, yeah, that, that's my that's my dad's name, actually. Wow. Maybe it is. <laughs> maybe it is. Maybe it's your dad trying to win a <laughs> win a free five pack. He's, he's, he's your only listener, so he's like, oh, I think I know. <laughs> that's my dad. No. <laughs> 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 well, go, going back to what you just said, talking about the bigger cigars, my, I know it's been. I'll tell you, my dad, my dad would never smoke these cigars. My dad <laughs> smoked uh, eighty graves of money makers, and he cut them in half, and because they cost they cost fifty cents a piece, and, and he thought that was too much, so he'd cut them in half and smoke one than the other one. <laughs> you flipping out ten dollar price points? Oh, he would. He'd be, he'd be like he'd be like the Miller Lite guy, like or a Miller High Life guy. <laughs> So you got to be kidding me with this bullshit. <laughs> you lost your mind. <laughs> you lost your mind. Let's go. Uh, anyway, go ahead. Let's go. Uh, are we going to make a digger? No, well, basically what what I'm going to ask you is there's been rumors on Twitter and some other places people are going to 7x60, 8x60. I even heard somebody say 8x80. What are your thoughts? Are you, any ideas of maybe doing Only something? women should smoke those sizes. <laughs> What's that? Only women should smoke those sizes. <laughs> Well, I like smoking no. bigger cigars, but I don't have little hands like most people, so I don't think those cigars are made for guys with little nubs. I think it's cool every now and then. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, if it burns, like the Digger, that's a huge cigar, but it burns good, it draws good, it, it, it uh, it's just a lot of fucking cigar, man. It's, um, you know, to me, it's cool, and we may do a couple of things like that, just, you know, every Friday we at the factory we do kind of different things just messing around seeing you know what comes out so i mean that's kind of one of the benefits of having your own factory and owning tobacco right is you can pretty just much make anything you want i mean this cigar i'm smoking right now is the uh the cro-magnon mode four it's a semi-press uh figurado almost like a perfecto preferito but it's uh kind of half pressed and it's uh I mean, actually, I told you it doesn't burn good, but it's actually burning. I don't know if you can see it. Yep, we it's can see it. Burning. Oh, let me do, let me do Mike's thing here. <laughs> yeah, it's it's actually burning pretty damn near perfect. So, um, but no, this is I love this size because it's kind of small in your mouth but big in the middle. You know, that's what she said. That's yeah. 
I, I, to me, you know, it, it, it's one of those things. If, if there's a demand for it, we probably can make it. Is it something that we can blow out of the out of, off the shelves? I mean, we've we've seen that the that the bigger gauges have have I mean, they've done really well. I think that the you know you know how do you put a how do you put a price value on that on the size like that? And how do you keep people from eating? it's all about the balance, right? So you got a big cigar with a lot of tobacco and a lot of weight. Um, but then on the flip side of that is you know will the market support what that price value should really come down to? Right. Yeah, and again, if it, again, if it's not something that I would smoke on a regular basis, then I'm not going to make it. That's just, I mean, that's just my. That's how we do it. Some people will say that that's not a good way of doing business, right? That you got to, that you got to make something for for your customers. But maybe that's true if you're making, you know, a million cigars a year or whatever. But you know, we're just not making that many, so we're going to make about, you know, three hundred thousand cigars a year, and I'm going to smoke about ten thousand of them. <laughs> Michael Smoke is, you know, three or four thousand of them. And are you playing any special releases? Yes, we are. Well, we're, we're the release yeah. Well, we were we were doing a cigar uh, for the uh, Twitter Brother of the Leaf Cocktail Hour, mm-hmm. uh, and we got it. We have them ready, but uh, I, I don't think we're end up going to actually end up doing that. Uh, Doing that deal, so probably what we'll end up doing with that cigar is we'll smoke it. <laughs> we'll smoke the lot of it. you wish you had. Yeah, we'll show pictures on Twitter so you can hate on it. Yeah. Now, um, probably what we'll do is we'll ship that cigar with orders. So we'll probably say, uh, I mean, you guys, I don't know, you guys decide, right? But probably what we'll do is we'll say if you buy, if you buy, if you place an order in, you know, September or something, you know, we'll give give me two of these or something like that. But uh, we've got them ready. Um, they're probably about another month from being ready to smoke. But. Sweet. Cool. What well, size is your that? Question, your question stumped everybody. We're not getting – they're either Googling the shit out of it and they can't figure it out or they're just stumped. Yeah, the only place we've mentioned it, I think, is on uh, Doc Stogie Fresh's show. So, well, a, they gotta, a so get over to Doc's site and check out the uh, podcast so, with so Cole Pine. Uh, so, we'll, so we'll give you a hint. The uh, – um, um, Alapo Hondega and uh, uh, what was the third one he said? He said uh, he said Esteli, Jalapa, yeah, Hondega, and yeah, yeah Hondega, Hondega, Jalapa, and what am I missing? The third one for in the filler. Yeah, no. Any, anyway, he had three of them right. You guys the sure you wrong. know the answer? Yeah, I was going to say. I, was, I, I, I don't want to give it away. I'm trying to remember what he said. Omatepe is wrong. O- Omatepe is wrong. Oh, so Esteli. Yeah. Esteli, Jalapa, and Condega. Esteli, okay. yeah. Okay. Esteli. So the fourth, one, the fourth one is a town on the Honduran border. I'll there you tell go. you that. And it's actually a, a small farm, and there's only been two other cigars ever made with tobacco from this farm. And we're the only ones to use the Lajero. We'll tell you that. Ooh, I can That's see. That's a pretty good hint. Uh, they're going crazy now. They're going yeah. nuts thinking about it. Google's about to die. <laughs> well, let me let me ask you guys this while we're waiting on a, on an answer, because we didn't really go over it. How did you come about the name cro Magnet? Explain the definition of it. So, man, we've, we've, we've been through that like on every show we've been on. Yeah, yeah so, go, so, so go through it again. <laughs> The, so, Pavel's yeah. got a place in his house called uh, the Man Cave. Man Cave. He's, he's got a nice little tweaked out garage, perfect for the for the cigar smoker. And um, so one day I show up and I'm thinking, hey man, I, I think I really I like this name. It's called uh, Harry Knuckles. Yeah. Harry Knuckles, yeah. Just like something that'll punch you square in the face and just be like real stout and strong and. He's like, well, what about uh, Knuckle Dragon? And I said, well, Knuckle Dragon would be really cool for a short, stumpy size cigar, you know, kind of, you know, mitts, you know. Um, do, you, do you guys know what a Knuckle Dragger is, by the way? Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to say what I think it is, but. Like, like, this is a common term when I was growing up. Like, like an Italian guy wears the wife beater and works on engines, and he's kind of just like a. Got you know the the unibrow and he's kind of 
you kind of question whether he's a a full blown Homo erectus or if he's maybe a little bit less evolved, right? And you, you call those guys a knuckle dragger, right? Like or a I don't know what another term of it would be, but we called them knuckle draggers. So that's where that came from. Okay. Yeah, so Matt said Neanderthal. Well, yeah, it's not really. Well, see, Neanderthal is a less evolved. It's, so you have uh, Neanderthal, then Cro-Magnon, then Homo erectus. And Homo erectus was just a little too gay. <laughs> so, oh, no homo. Yeah. So we, we wanted to kind of, a, a, you know, we're sitting out here like a couple of cavemen. We, we wanted to kind of do something along that kind of captured the what cigar smoking is really all about. is kind of the culture of... People call it a lifestyle. I mean, have you read the new uh, Zeno Platinum Z Class uh, little blurb on their thing? No. It's it's pretty it's pretty high end. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like way way too high end for me. I mean, it's like lifestyle of lu- luxurious opulence and you know, like mini giraffes and shit. Yeah, I don't need a dictionary to figure out what a cigar is all about. So, right. So so anyway, it's basically like a more evolved caveman. And that's kind of where we came up with it. And then I did about a month worth of research on different anthrop- anthropology sites to come up with the different mandible and cranium. So we, what the whole goal was is to, to come into is there's a community. First off, no one likes to smoke cigars by themselves, right? Sure. When you go into a cigar lounge or a cigar shop or whatever, you know the the inevitable question will be, hey, what are you smoking to somebody you do or do not know? Oh, I'm trying out this. I'm trying out that. You know, and that's that's really what it all comes down to is, is you know, whatever you the want. Cult, the culture. The, of the it, culture yeah. of, the, of the of the smoker is you know you can kind of check at the door you know your social economic status you know as long as you're kind of in and you're smoking something you're not you know not puffing on black and miles or something like that you know I mean you're going to be accepted in the cigar culture community mm-hmm. and so that was kind of what we were trying to go for was is, is that you know here we are. In, the, in, in a man cave, but yet, you know, it's high class. I wouldn't say high class, but I mean, it's, you know, flat screen TV and the whole thing. And we really wanted to kind of pinpoint on is that, you know, this is a very good sample of what the rest of the cigar culture community is doing, right? And so, and especially as the as the cigar laws kind of come into the no, no smoking bans, um, you know, we'll kind of be left to these smaller type places to get together and, and to, to fragments. And so that that's really what we were trying to hone in on is, is that we're all in it together, right? And, and again, our next line, that's kind of what that's, well, the 30 is going to be, it's kind of more about Mike's personal history, but the, and John asked a question about that. We, you can talk a little more about the 30, but um, the intemperance is kind of a, a play on this, uh, the prohibition era. So, um, yeah, so if we all end up getting idea. locked out, well, we can't go any place to smoke. You know, well, what does that end up doing? You start bootlegging and doing some other things. So I'll just smoke wherever the fuck I want to smoke. Wherever we want to smoke. That's me. That's how he rolls. So, hey, John wants to know. Uh, I'm going to take over the host duties of the show here. Yeah, you're slapping, guys. John wants to know what's the taste profile of the uh, 30. Delicious. <laughs> Like them apples? No, it, it's uh, it's it's got deliciousness. Deliciousness with a little bit of uh, more deliciousness on top of it, sprinkled in with some kick-ass. Um, you know, it's a it's a really medium body, full flavor smoke that will it it's had. You know, I think that the 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 whole goal on it is to be more in line of kind of toning it down a little bit, not being so heavy in in the tobacco and the nicotine, which is what the Cro Magnet is really all about. Um, but be you know more for the um, early afternoon type smoker. Yeah, somebody who wants to smoke a cigar without. I mean, someone like Mike, right? Who wants to smoke a cigar without getting sick, and but also wants a lot of you know flavor complexity. Yeah. Yeah, and that is hard so, to find in a lot of miles. Yeah. Well, the, the two, hard, to, in my opinion, the three hardest things to do making cigars are a to to make a, a, a lancero. Uh, because trying to fit a, a complex blend into a skinny cigar is hard as hell. B is to make a really strong cigar that has a lot of flavor, which I think we accomplished with the Cro Magnet. Uh, we're not going to make a Lancero, regardless of what the cigar feed wants. Um, the third thing I think is really hard is making a uh, 
cigar that that uh, is complex and, and nuanced, but doesn't have strength. That had to, it's not overwhelming in strength. So I mean, complexity in general is tough. But uh, um, I mean, you know, there's only so many types of tobacco. And uh, I mean, you know, if I gave you if I gave you nine ingredients and said, you know, make something in the kitchen, uh, there would only be so many dishes that you could come up with, right? And that's kind of the way the cigar cigar business is. So what we really kind of start trying to focus on is something you like that you can make consistently, right? right. And that's many, what the thirty is. How many different on, the, on back to the chromatin? How many different blends did you? go through before you came up with the final blend? I don't know, man, like 35, 40. I mean, because I, <clears throat> we probably, Mike went through probably 15 or 20 before he ever even brought them to me. And then we probably smoked five or six flights before we narrowed it down to the final three. And then the final three, I think uh, it was pretty obvious which one of the three was the, the right one. So, um, and then again, once we started making that one, when we got into the different sizes, we tweaked them a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and you go into a, a lot more of, okay, kind of like in the 60, right, in the mandible. Yeah. The, the ASL, you know, once once we had them, it's like, okay, well, this one is not a really good, it doesn't reflect the other lines, so, or the other sizes, and so it's completely, you know, even though it's got the same amount of tobacco, it's just not really kind of uh, indicative of what the other one's taste like, and so it was, you know, we had to go back to the lab on that one. Okay, so George asked the question was uh, how long have you been working on it? So Mike has owned Adrian since 2006. Uh, I own Galaxy Bay Tobacco since 2006, actually almost exactly the same time. Uh, Mike's been making the, Chrome, I mean, the Adrian's since 07, and I've been making the uh, – uh, we, we started working on the Chrome Magnet, I guess, back in – well, if you go all the way back to when he was making a cigar for me, it was back like a year ago. Right. But we really started rolling the first round of Cro-Magnon in like November, December. When we went to production. Yeah. So I've heard that Ernesto smoked one of, the, one of your cigars, took it apart, and identified everything inside of it. Is that true? Yeah, except for the fourth leaf. He didn't know the fourth leaf. Oh, see that? And the Paris that chat room doesn't either. <laughs> yeah, nobody knows it. <laughs> oh, but, oh, but in five minutes, he, he pretty much broke it down. So Should we give him a hint? Should we give him another closer hint? I don't know, man. We already told these bitches everything but the answer. <laughs> you know, I did, somebody, somebody re asked the question of was they going to have a man or not. To answer your question, yes, eventually they will have names. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. Well, you guys decide what you want to do because I'm not sure if they're going to get the fourth one. Do you want to uh, give them a different question or and give them the answer? Well, we'll, well, we can. What we'll do is we'll leave it open, and then they can they can tweet you guys on Twitter uh, okay. if they find it next. Whatever the first one that comes up with it, we'll tell you guys the answer, and then okay. first one that comes up with the answer, you can. Uh, we'll give them a five pack of the mandible since we talked about that. We do anything. Okay. Anything else? Uh, we're pretty much at our hour with the show. Is there anything else you guys want to go over? Uh, plug, mention? Um, we are offering no free shipping for how long? Okay. Yeah, free shipping this month uh, with the Father's Day 2011 coupon. There's, there's, there's a picture right on the front of the page that gives you the coupon. And then today, if they order today, it was all that it was since Wednesday, they get triple cigar weasel points. Nice. So free go. shipping and triple cigar weasel points. Right. And you said the boxes that will be available in the August, in August, right? Yeah, and the, the cigars we ship in cube quantity in August will have boxes. So we'll probably get some five and ten packs of of the knuckle driver and EMH in first, and then uh, late August we'll have the, the cube quantities we'll ship in boxes. Okay. Nice. All right. Well, if there's no other questions for Skip and Mike, we're going to uh, end the broadcast now. And uh, I want to thank both you guys for coming on, and uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for having us on. I, I feel like I should have worn my, my Iron Maiden concert T-shirt. <laughs> that would have worked. <laughs> Can rock it out any way you need to. Uh, let me just say this. At least half of this team is super professional. 
Thank you. I know I am. I, I try to be. <laughs> Mike does his best. To, I'm trying. I can't catch up to him. I'm trying. But you know, my, my you know my wife Angela, her favorite thing on Twitter is when she wakes up in the morning is when she sees Mike's tweets and Mike throws one of his muhaha or whatever. It cracks her up. I think. <laughs> I am right, too professional you know, for everybody. And, 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 well, no, we, we appreciate you guys having us on. I think another thing is, you know, follow us on uh, Pro Magnet Cigar. If you're not following us already, the other one would be Chief Cabin and Smoke Agents. I think that uh, any type of promotional stuff that we put out, we definitely tweet up on. That's, that's probably the quickest way to get information on what we're doing. And I think it's time for us to eat a steak. It is steak time. There you go. Yeah. Sounds good. And we'll all put right. all your information on the post when we put it up on the website. So we'll have your website. Yeah, yeah let, me, let me see this last thing real quick. Uh, you know, thanks to... Uh, Mr. Unong for uh, letting us use the uh, Million Dollar Cigar Lounge here at uh, Cool River in Austin. It's a pretty sick place. One of the few places you can still smoke and uh, and uh, drink, so appreciate them doing that for us. Sweet. Well, we will definitely have you, we will definitely have uh, everything, all your information in our post, and uh, we'll keep you informed, whoever wins the five-pack, and we appreciate you guys coming on and hope to have you on again and look forward to uh, your future endeavors. And continued success with the Crow Magnum and Adrian's. Thanks, Mike. Thank you very much. All right, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. See you later. Thanks. All right, everybody. Well, that was Mike and Skip uh, from Crow Magnum and Adrian Cigars. Uh, we appreciate everybody in the chat room. And remember, if you can figure out what that last one was, send a tweet to uh, myself or Mike or to Stogie 411. And uh, we'll be sure to get that information to those guys. And uh, hopefully somebody will win that five-pack. They want to give it away. So uh, definitely figure it out. <laughs> I don't know yeah. the answer. Yeah, you'll have to go to uh, Doc Stogie Fresh. Doc's a good guy. And uh, listen to his podcast with him. And I guess you'll get the answer there. So whoever's the first one to listen to the podcast and get through it to, to find the answer will win them. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Well, that pretty much does it for the show. Again, thanks to everybody in the chat room. It's nice to see uh, some new faces in there. Thanks, George, for, for popping in as well. It's nice to see you there. And uh, we will be back on July 7th at 7 p.m. with our blogger show. And uh, we will have uh, Joel from The World According to Stu. He will be on our blogger show. So make sure you tune in and check it out. Yeah, it should be a good show. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So, uh, again, that's it from uh, from my end. You got anything else you want to add, Mikey? No. All right. Well, we're out then, folks. We will see everybody <laughs> in two weeks on Thursday, July 7th. Thanks, guys. See, see you later. See you.